one. Elon head coach Kirk Signetti joins us now. Welcome to the Colonial Athletic Association. Coach, first of all, uh, kind of a simple question. What was it that attracted you to, to head to Elon and to coach the Phoenix? Right. Well, why not? I mean, it was a coaching challenge, in my opinion. Uh, you know, when I left Alabama to go to IUP as head coach, that was a very unconventional move. A lot of people thought I was crazy, but I wanted to be a head coach. The program was down. We won a lot of games, left it in great shape. We're on the cusp of competing for a national championship. You know, Elon called. I was involved with them before in 2005. Uh, when I flew down, uh, very impressed with the facility changes that had taken place on campus. Looked around and said, why not? Uh, what, what are we lacking here? And I couldn't come up with an answer. And I uh, figured, well, they just need a leader and a blueprint and execute the blueprint. And uh, here we are. Your blueprint uh, offensively. What might we expect uh, from the Phoenix? What will you employ there from an offensive standpoint? And uh, another key question, have you got a quarterback? <laughs> well, we're, we're up tempo spread. Uh, I went that way three years ago, a lot of Clemson, Houston study, and uh, we play fast, up-tempo. Uh, I'm very excited about our quarterbacks. We had two freshmen come in in January, Jalen Green and Davis Cheek, and by the fifth or sixth practice, they, they were taking all the reps at quarterback, and I suspect that we'll see them both in the fall. Uh, they both have, uh, there's things that, they can both run the whole offense, and there's certain things one does better than the other. And Daniel Thompson, who was a starter last year, uh, can we can get him ready in short notice if we need to. Connor Christensen, who's played quarterback here in the past, would move to safety. So I think we had a great spring, changed culture and a mindset. Players are in a good spot, believing, and so getting ready for fall camp. All right, so thanks for that side of the ball. Let's flip to the other side defensively. Right. Uh, what players have impressed you? What did it, what, who did impress you during the spring, and yeah. what do we anticipate uh, alignment right. scheme-wise Sure, yeah. Well, I hired Tony Trishiani from Villanova. They were number one in the country on defense last year. Came highly recommended. We're, we've gone three down. And uh, I, I saw significant progress about the middle of spring on once we got our gap control right and assignments. It's all about 11 guys doing their job. You know, when you get that, it's not addition, it's multiplication. Uh, when you have problems, it's usually because somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. So I thought we got a lot better assignment-wise. And, uh, you know, Warren Messer at linebacker impressed me, Chris Blair at DB. I think we've got other guys that can develop and become good football players. I thought the team in general came a long way in the intangible areas of toughness, discipline. Uh, we were much more demanding, I think, than they were used to in the past. I saw great progress from our guys, and uh, I'm anxious to get back in fall camp. Uh, you referenced Alabama, and we know that uh, you were there, of course, with Nick Saban. And right, yeah. if you are a disciple and work with Saban, then people are going to ask the question, what did you take away from working yeah. with this? Well, team? you know, I'm a son of a coach, and my dad's in the College Football Hall of Fame, and I had the opportunity to work for Johnny Majors, too, who's a legend. Coach Saban, I was part of the original staff. We went in ground floor, very mediocre program, built it up quickly, won national championship our third year, and stayed for four years, and learned a lot from Nick uh, in the way a program should be run in terms of uh, culture, mindset, expectations and standards, accountability, recruiting and development, how to practice, you know, the things that are important in terms of winning a football game once the ball is kicked off. And uh, so I think that helped a lot. And this, this program is very similar philosophically, but it's got my personality uh, tweaked to it and my signature on it. I do think my personality fit that program. And, uh, you know, so it worked at one place it was down, and uh, we're going to build a championship football program here. You mentioned uh, all those great names, and, of course, your dad, as you mentioned right. as well. So, uh, obviously, when you're at the dinner table with dad you know, growing <laughs> up, you were talking football. But yeah. when in your life did things start to evolve or assimilate that I'm going to spend my entire life in football? Yeah. When did it become a part of you? Probably, coaching probably when I was in third grade and we moved to Morgantown, West Virginia, my dad was Bobby Bowden's offensive coordinator. And uh, I think that's when I knew that first year we moved. And uh, I tried to do, I was, you know, he encouraged me to look at other things. You know, I did some internships when I was in college and business, but just, uh, you know, football was in my blood. I always knew what I was going to do, and here I am. Are you excited about the challenge of competing in CA football? In fact, a couple of coaches before you today kind of referenced the CAA is the FCS version of the SEC in many yeah. regards. Um, can you, you know, you're playing at, you're with Elon, you're playing in this league, the challenges of this league. 
Well, it, it, it would, I would compare it to the SEC West, not the East, okay. but, or the NFL. No, but uh, it's a great conference, recognizes top national conference. Look, we play f five top 25 teams in conference. Charleston Southern's ranked in the top 20, and then we got Toledo, who's almost in the top 25 in FBS. But you know what? When you're not very good, you know, you're always going to have a tough schedule. So you've got to become a top 25 team. And look, I've been doing this a long time. I know the history. But I also know this, that our players have a lot more to show. And they believe that. And I think by being demanding, structured, and organized, they have shown that progress in the spring. Now it's time to have a great camp and then go in and play them one at a time. Okay? Because in a football game, you know, there's a very fine line. Uh, between victory and defeat. There's three or four plays. And, and a team that maybe wasn't very good in the past or the past two years, okay, they start getting 11 guys doing their job consistently, playing fast, physical, and relentless. And then you win one or two of those games early and you start to create a little bit of momentum and you deal with success the right way, not the wrong way, and you maintain that edge. Then all of a sudden you start winning those close games. All of a sudden you can go from a two-win team to a seven or eight-win team real fast. Okay, but look, all, here's what we're worried about, the process of improving every single day and becoming as good as we can be today to put ourselves in the best position for tomorrow. Again, welcome to the CA, Kurt Signetti, head coach of the Phoenix of Elon. Best of luck this year. Thank you.